Want a large SUV that can walk the walk as well as talking the talk? What about one you probably aren't familiar with, the vastly improved version of the fourth generation Sanyong Rexton? If you're secure enough in yourself not to care too much about badge equity and want a large, capable, well-equipped seven-seat 4x4 for sensible money, it makes a lot of sense. Increasingly, large luxury SUVs are all about image, all about badge equity, all about fashion, or at least most of them are. Here's one that's more practically grounded, the improved version of the fourth generation Sanyong Rexton. Of all this South Korean brand's products, the Rexton is probably the one provoking most familiarity amongst UK buyers. That's because it's been around so long, since 2001 in fact, sold in first generation form until 2006, when a second generation version offered much the same kind of solid practical proposition and much the same aging 2.7 litre Mercedes diesel engine. A big step forward though was made in 2013 with the launch of the Mark III model Rexton W, which got a properly modern 2 litre EXDI diesel engine, later uprated to 2.2 litre capacity. The fourth generation Y400 series design announced in 2018 borrowed that engine, but not a lot else, showcasing the recent steps forward that Sanyong had made in technology and quality. It's the improved version of that Mark IV design, the Y450 series model, that we look at here. On the move, this improved Rexton certainly feels quite cultured in the cabin, but once you've got properly underway, it's quickly clear that the driving dynamics are much as they've always been with this model line. Sanyong continues to reject the car-like monocoque style chassis approach used by mainstream rivals in favour of the sort of tougher but much heavier body on frame ladder chassis that you'd find in tougher SUVs intended for regular off-piste use. You're certainly instantly aware of this Rexton's size and weight, especially if you start throwing the car about. By the same token though, there's also a pleasing sense of solidity that imparts a kind of feeling of safety and security that some will feel is far more important in a large SUV of this kind. And of course, thanks to a proper heavy duty four wheel drive setup with a low range gearbox, this Rexton can be hugely impressive off road. We'll get to that once we've told you about the under bonnet changes. This improved Rexton gets an uprated 2.2 litre turbo diesel engine manufactured by Sanyong, which delivers uh, maximum power of 202 PS, that's up from 181 PS before, a maximum torque of 441 Newton meters, that's up from 420 Newton meters previously. This power plant delivers progressive acceleration from a standing start, the rest of 62 mile an hour sprint time takes 11.9 seconds. But more important is the way that this proven EXDI 220 unit has been tuned primarily for the strong low end torque typical of the Korean makers power plants. You now have to have auto transmission and it's now a high ND sourced 8 speed automatic replacing the previous Mercedes sourced 7 speed e-tronic auto. Like most Sanyong SUVs, this one will be ideal for those wishing to tow. Thanks to a braked towing capacity of three and a half tons, it can deal with heavier items like a double horse box, a large caravan, or a commercial trailer. And of course, it's extremely capable off the beaten track. This SUV normally runs in its 2H driving mode, which sees drive coming from the rear wheels. Get onto the slippery stuff though, and you can select a 4H high range four wheel drive option. Unlike most rivals, there's also a proper low range gearbox offering a further 4L option should things get gnarlier. So no, this Sanyong isn't precious about getting up to its axles in mud. That's refreshing. You'd hesitate to take most luxury SUVs seriously off road and even if you did, you'd constantly be worrying about damaging the thing. There's none of that here. 
the tougher the train, the better this Rexton likes it, thanks not only to that solid ladder frame chassis, but also to a heavy duty four wheel drive setup that splits the torque equally between front and rear axles to provide all round traction and ensure optimum grip, even in the most challenging conditions. Steeply undulating terrain is no problem either, thanks to decent ground clearance, an approach angle of 20.5 degrees, a departure angle of 22 degrees, and a ramp breakover angle of 20 degrees. So it walks the walk when it comes to hard work. But of course this Rexton is going to be spending most of its life on tarmac, a much more challenging environment for an SUV built upon such rugged fundamentals. We've already remarked on the rather limited agility you get through the turns, which isn't helped by slightly over-assisted steering. You appreciate that around town though, where this Sanyong is more manoeuvrable than you'd expect a hefty 4.85 metre long, 1.9 metre wide SUV to be. The decently tight 5.5 metre turning circle helps here, as does a glassy cabin that'll make adjusting to this car from something smaller reasonably easy. On the highway, the car is refined and surprisingly impressive, going about its business with a rather beguiling effortlessness complemented by that smooth shifting auto box. This revised Rexton has a much more commanding presence thanks to a more imposing chrome studded front grille surrounded by restyled LED headlamps which gives it a more powerful sturdy stance. This top variant features these angular LED fog lamps too. The rear end has also been updated with revised LED tail light clusters. At the top of the large tailgate there's this roof spoiler with an integrated high level brake light and just above you'll spot the shark fin antenna for the radio and sat nav. Lower down silver trimming for the exhausts provides a finishing touch. In profile you get more of a perspective on the significant size of this car. Sanyong describing it as a competitor for both D and E segment SUV models. To translate that for you, it means that this Rexton can do more than just take on D class family SUVs of the size of, say, a Nissan X Trail or a Skoda Kodiak. Its 4.85 metre length is actually closer to that of a bigger, far pricier E sector model like a Land Rover Discovery or a Volvo XC90. Style wise, you get this rather curious mixture of bodywork swage lines, a conventional one that runs just below the high set window line, and a second rearward one that drops down sharply just ahead of the rear door handle. These 18 inch alloy wheels, meanwhile, are your differentiation point between standard Ventura and top ultimate trim, this plushest version featuring these rims with a diamond cut finish. Separating the arches and emphasizing the long wheelbase length is this optional sidestep, and of course there are chunky roof rails. Under the skin, as usual with a Rexton, you get the solid body on frame construction that rival brands have long abandoned. The Korean brand says this SUV is one of the strongest and safest cars in its class, thanks to the high strength steel construction of its body, which makes this model stiffer than many monocoque built competitors in this category. Time to take a seat behind the wheel. It's quite a step up. But once you're inside, it's really quite impressive. Probably the nicest Sanyong cabin we've ever sampled. Would you think you were in a premium German model? Probably not, but the cabin quality difference uh, to much pricier SUVs of that sort has narrowed hugely. Silver trim features on the dash, the lower centre console and on the curiously shaped four spoke leather trimmed wheel. This top model gets mood lighting and full leather upholstery, though we miss the lovely quilted leather trim that was applied to top versions of the pre facelift model. The main difference with this updated version of the fourth generation Rexton is the addition of this 12.3 inch digital instrument display, replacing conventional dials in the binnacle and standard on both model variants. You can get it to display in various layout formats, including one that enables you to almost, but not quite, view full screen mapping. 
Anything you can't find here will be located on the HiSET HD Center Dash touchscreen, which can show its functions in a useful split screen format and is 8 inches in size on the base Ventura model or 9.2 inches with this top ultimate variant. Both monitors feature Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, but only this larger one has built in navigation and a 360 degree camera system. A proper off-roader should have a properly high commanding driving position and this one does. It's easy to get comfortably placed and I like this really nice touch which I haven't seen on any other car. Powered seat controls on the side bolster of the front passenger seat so that the driver can easily adjust it to better suit the needs of the rear passenger seated behind that chair. Neat. With both variants the front seats are power adjustable, heated and cooled too. You can't really fault the Rexton for cabin storage space. There's this deep box between the seats with a 12 volt socket. This uh, panel slides back to reveal twin cup holders next to the gear stick with twin USB ports. There's a storage compartment, also lidded, at the bottom of the centre stack. And you get a decently sized glove box. The door bins aren't very big, but you get ticket clips on the sun visors and there's a recess by the door pulls. Time to take a seat in the second row, which is where that extra body length this Rexton enjoys over similarly priced segment rivals really ought to pay off. That's pretty much the way it works out back here with decent space for two and thanks to this low centre transmission tunnel, room for three should you need there to be. Now unfortunately the seats don't slide but the seat bags do recline and the seats are heated too. A central 12 volt socket and two USBs are provided along with a cubby. Uh, we'd like to have seen some dedicated reading lights back here but rear occupants do get their own air vents. Plus there's a fold down center armrest with cup holders and an integrated cubby. You also get decently sized door bins and seat back pockets too. This car's long wheelbase means there's room for third row seating too. Now with the original version of this fourth generation model you couldn't have third row chairs with this top ultimate level of spec. But Sanyong has now corrected that oversight. Theoretically you can get into the third row from either side of the car. In practice though you'll have to do it on the driver's side because on the off side you'll have to lift up two thirds of the rear seat which is very heavy. On this side, there's a third of the rear bench to lift up using this lower lever. It doesn't lever um, out of the way very far though, and you're gonna need to be fairly athletic to make your way to the very back. Which clues you in early to the fact that as usual with a seven seat SUV in this class, these extra pews are really only meant for children. You'd also gather that from a glance at the absolutely tiny amount of legroom you get. Plus, as usual with a seven-seat SUV, the need to house the four-wheel drive system underneath the floor means a raised floor level that in turn uh, means that your knees end up around the level of your waist. Headroom's in fairly short supply for an adult thanks to the way that the ceiling slopes down towards your forehead just when you need it to be a little higher. But it's this restricted legroom that's the real issue here. You could say that that's the case with competitors too, but the problem with this Rexton that isn't shared with a lot of its rivals is that because the middle row seats can't be slid forward, there's no way to alleviate the tiny amount of leg space by compromising with those ahead. Sanyong hasn't thought to provide cup holders for four folk back here either, but you do get trinket trays on both sides, a 12 volt socket on the right, and these small rear quarter light windows. And boot space? Well, let's check that out. The trunk area accessed by a powered smart tailgate on this top spec Ultimate model. Once the hatch is raised, there's inevitably not much room if all three seating rows are in place like this. A few shopping bags will be about your limit. But most of the time, of course, you're going to be able to fold these extra seats into the floor. And if that's the case, then you'll free up 649 litres of space which can be completely flat if you put this adjustable height floor panel in its highest position. 
Need more room? Well, if you fold the middle row backrest forward, there are no useful sidewall catches to help you do that, so you have to walk around and do it. A vast storage area is provided, 1,806 litres in size. And in a nice touch, Sangyong provides an optional mat to cover the entire cargo area. Now, that area uh, provides about 35% more room than you get with the model we'd see as the Rexton's most like-minded rival, the long wheelbase version of Toyota's Land Cruiser. You get this deep bin also to the right here, as well as a 12 volt socket and elasticated straps either side. Prices are quite a lot higher than they were at this generation model's original launch, but still represent decent value in the segment and now include auto transmission and seven seats with both variants. The Rexton lineup now sees an entry level seven seat Ventura version at around £38,000, but most will want to find another £3,000 for this plusher Ultimate model. Comparably powerful 4x4 200 PS diesel versions of obvious rivals like the Skoda Kodiak, the Seat Taraco and the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace cost slightly more and of course can't get anywhere near this Sanyong off-road. You'd need something like a long wheelbase Toyota Land Cruiser or a Land Rover Discovery to be able to do that. And then with comparable spec you'd be looking at needing to pay up to and well beyond £50,000. As expected, Sangyong's equipment levels are generous. Even the base Ventura derivative comes complete with 18-inch alloy wheels, uh, LED headlamps, a 12.3-inch full digital console, uh, dual-zone climate control, and an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Google Android Auto. Plus, there's power-assisted steering, a heated leather steering wheel, uh, power-adjustable heated and ventilated front seats, faux leather upholstery, front and rear parking sensors and a rear view camera. Safety kit includes autonomous emergency braking, safety distance warning, lane departure warning, front vehicle start warning, speed limit warning, smart high beam and trailer sway control. Step up to this Rexton Ultimate and you also get a larger 9 inch central HD audio screen with TomTom -tom navigation plus interior mood lighting, stainless steel door finishes, a rear view camera with a 3D 360 degree monitoring system, lane change collision warning, blind spot detection warning, rear cross traffic warning, uh, premium leather upholstery, heated and ventilated powered seats, and a smart electronic tailgate. As for options, well, you might find it refreshing to learn that there really aren't very many, uh, if you want more kit, Sanyong prefers you to move up a trim grade. The key extra cost features you can add are metallic paint, that's here, a full size spare tyre and of course a tow bar, which is something that the vast majority of buyers will want. This particular car also has several further popular additional cost items, uh, side steps, uh, window, side window buffeting panels, a dog guard and a roller mat to cover the load area base when the seats are flattened. Now earlier we mentioned some of the uh, camera safety features that Sanyong now fits to this car. That's in addition to a raft of passive safety kit, which includes all the usual electronic assistance for stability and traction control, plus ABS with a brake assist feature for emergency stops that'll be advertised to following motorists by emergency stop signaling. There's also active rollover protection, hill descent control to prevent the car going too quickly down slippery slopes, and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. If all of this should fail to prevent you from having an accident, there are no fewer than nine airbags, including a driver's knee bag and two extra side airbags for rear seat passengers. Plus, as you'd expect on a car of this price, there are Isofix child seat mounts in the two outer middle row rear seats and tyre pressure monitoring as well. The Rexton's fundamentally safe too, with a tough body shell, 81.7% of which is fabricated from high strength steel. Plus the front end is designed to protect pedestrians as much as possible in the event of an impact. Sanyong has done a reasonable job in bringing the running costs 
of this Rexton up to date, courtesy of its own 2.2 litre Euro 6 EXDI diesel engine. Combined cycle fuel economy is rated at 32.9 miles to the gallon and the CO2 figure is 225 grams per kilometre, both reading slightly down on those of the pre-facelifted model. The magazines will tell you that these returns aren't up to the levels of most other cars in this class. Well, of course they're not. Few of those rivals are as tough and capable, nor do they have a proper but inevitably heavy low-range 4x4 transmission. So we need to be comparing apples with apples and pitching this car against proper tough SUVs that as well as seating seven can easily tow heavy loads and if necessary take you through the Serengeti rather than simply the odd muddy car park. Once you do that, this Rexton actually stacks up pretty well with running cost figures pretty similar to those of a properly rugged rival like Toyota's Land Cruiser. Service intervals are every 12 and a half thousand miles or 12 months, whichever comes first. Residual values should be good too. Used Rexton's are in high demand across San Young's dealer network and experts cap reckon that after three years and 10,000 miles, this car would be worth 51% of its original value. After four years, the figure would be 44%. Perhaps the best bit though, is the peace of mind that comes as standard with this car, thanks to San Young's impressively complete, class leading, seven year, 150,000 mile warranty. Let's get down to the facts here. There is no other properly capable large SUV in the same price bracket as this Sanyong Rexton, which has a little more of a premium feel in this improved guise. If you want something really comparable with seven seats that can tow as much or go as far off the beaten track, then you'll need to pay around 30% more for a Land Rover Discovery or a Toyota Land Cruiser. Now, this basic point appears to have been ignored by most reviewers who seem to insist on comparing this Sanyong to rivals not capable of even thinking about tackling the tough tusks this Rexton will take in its stride. Yes, of course, the properly tough underpinnings necessary to achieve this mean that this car won't tackle the tarmac twisties like most of its rivals. But then to get a properly capable SUV, a few sacrifices need to be made. Approach a drive in a Rexton remembering this with expectations based around the things that this car has been designed to do and you're likely to be very satisfied with it. Sure, it offers very much a no-nonsense approach, but in the pretentious age we live in, that in many ways is actually rather refreshing. There's still a place in the SUV segment for old school virtues, and Korea's oldest and most experienced brand reckons it's perfectly placed to deliver them. <laughs>